Okay, hi, my name is Ewan Dalton. I'm from Microsoft. Uh, I work in a, a group that looks after independent software vendors that are building some kind of services that they sell to customers or uh, consumers or, or uh, other businesses. Now, we're here today talking about the Internet of Things. What's your overall feeling of the Internet of Things at the moment? Um, there's a couple of things you could approach the, the Internet of Things discussion from. Um, it's, it's going to be really big. Everyone seems to accept that. All the analysts are coming up with telephone numbers about the size of the market. Um, even if they're all wrong by a factor of 10, it's still going to be really big. Uh, the, I suppose the question is really, why should uh, a company be interested in using Internet of Things technology? Why should an end user, a consumer, uh, care about using that type of technology? And ultimately, it all comes down to what data it gives them, what insight they can use that data to gain. And at the moment, there's a lot of gimmickry around and there's a lot of people playing with things. A lot of businesses are interested, but they're not really invested in it all that much. But when we, we get to the point where they start to really see that there is a worthwhile return on that investment, then it could explode. So we all heard about the internet connected toothbrush and other gimmicks like that. How do you do? You, do you feel that like that's holding the back the perception in society of Internet of Things? I'm not really sure. Actually, I don't even know if society as a whole has a perception of the Internet of Things. Uh, in the technology circles, then for sure, everyone's got their idea about what Internet of Things is all about, and, and it's generally thought about as being a consumer thing. So people having thermostats that are somehow connected to the internet, or the, the classic one is the internet connected fridge that will reorder your milk when it, when it gets to the use by date. And, and in fact, nobody really wants that kind of thing, or if they do, they certainly don't want to pay a premium for it. And when some of these early products came out, they were you know, twice the price of a, of a normal fridge or a normal toothbrush or a normal toaster or whatever, and uh, it, the utility just isn't there to justify spending a lot of extra money on it. So it will get to the point where the technology that we know of as Internet of Things will just become part of the norm in the same way that smart TVs were a separate uh, thing but now you can't really buy a TV that's not a smart TV, they'll just be TVs in the future. Now, obviously, one of the main concerns about Internet of Things, because it's all about data, is the data sharing aspect of that. How do you feel that we can combat that sort of fear? So this is the, 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 the elephant in the room of Internet of Things. is not necessarily just data sharing and data privacy, but the, the concept of data ownership. Um, ultimately, the, the, the utility aspect will come from being able to gain insight through gathering data that otherwise we wouldn't be able to gather. You know, there's data all around us that we're not measuring, uh, whether it's where are things, who's using them, what are they doing, what's the environment surrounding them. And Internet of Things technology lets us measure a lot of that and do something with it. The challenge then is what can be done when you infer something from pieces of otherwise benign data? Like, where somebody is, where they're going, what surrounds them. You could piece these things together and, and, and make much more than just the, the fact of you know, the, the location. So data ownership is going to be the, the challenge of, of establishing if you are being measured, do you own the fact that you are being measured? Do you own the data that results from that? Or is it owned by the people that are measuring you? Uh, and that's uh, it's a problem that the industry as a whole is going to have to address. I think the challenge right now is consumers will not care if you put that in front of them and say do you consent to all these things they'll just say yes mm. just like all the terms and conditions that you get popping up the cookie thing that says you know we're going to use cookies on this website everyone but everyone just says accept because it's really annoying they do the same thing with internet of things terms and conditions and then who knows at some point down the line they might discover that uh, organizations that are collecting data about them and using it to ends that they might not necessarily have consented to and there could be a backlash against it so do you feel that there needs to be any sort of governmental intervention, more laws? Obviously we've got the Data Protection Act, but do you feel that, do, does that cover this in enough, uh, with enough power, do you think? The, D the Data Protection Act doesn't really cover it in enough power, but then it'd be difficult to imagine a legal framework that would do without holding everything back. You know, you could over-regulate to the extent where either people will frequently break the law or else they just won't bother doing things that otherwise would be of benefit. So it's going to be a difficult thing to manage. I think the, 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 the good thing about Internet of Things from a technology perspective is no one tech provider is going to be able to own the entire stack. So um, you know, the, the risk of being kind of in the pocket of one company 
uh, that might have otherwise, uh, um, you know, other than <laughs> benevolent aims for you, uh, is probably reduced because of the fact that it's such a spread of, te of technical uh, um, pieces that you know, the, the data uh, collection piece should be, um, you know, the risk should be reduced somewhat. And from your sort of personal um, standpoint and the internet of things, what sort of data would you be happy to share from your personal life? Well, it depends who I'm sharing it with. Uh, and it depends uh, what I think they're going to do from that. And it also depends what, you, what I'm going to get back from them. You know, a lot of people share information about their whereabouts and what they do without realising it, but the, the, the benefit they get because of the service they're using. Uh, is, is seen as worthwhile. You know, search engines are a great example of that. Where you know, there's a lot of tracking goes on in the internet that people don't realise, but they don't necessarily object to it because of the fact they get to find stuff out and they get to you know visit interesting web pages and the likes. So, um, what kind of data I'd be willing to share? Uh, it, it really depends. I mean, uh, generally speaking, I, I obviously as a technologist, I'm. Uh, invested in the Internet of Things at a personal level. I wear a fitness band. I've got sensors all over my house. Uh, you know, I've got stuff in my car that tells me things as I'm driving along. But that's all for my benefit. And if I'm sharing that with someone, then I need to question what they want to do with that information. And I'm, I'm not so sure I'd be too uh, keen to see a great deal of that happening unless I saw a direct benefit myself. Because the thing is with those um, things like, like you mentioned, the things that track how many steps you take, etc. When you upload that data, um, do you know exactly what that company is doing with that data? Because you agreed to the terms and conditions. I bet you that was put you on the spot, but you probably didn't read them. You don't know not. who they're sharing it with. Yeah. So yeah. at the moment, you, it could be anyway. Could, they could be doing all sorts of things with it. Uh, that's very true. And, and, and I guess we have a, a kind of inherent trust that a company that's going to give us something that is useful or something that we're paying for. I mean, fitness bands are a great example. You know, they're not cheap. Decent fitness bands, best part of hundred pounds, uh, and you obviously get some services with that, which that, you know you probably aren't paying for after you you buy the thing. Um, but you would expect that the company that you are buying it from will not be using your data for you know ill gain for them. You know, so anything that would be detrimental to me, I would certainly not expect that. But I would like to think that they're not doing stuff with that that I would disapprove of. Um, now this is something which is interesting when. Um, when Google bought uh, or announced the, the decision to buy Nest, the, the smart thermostat company, um, there was a bit of a backlash against people who had seen Nest as this kind of friendly startup, you know, guys that were ex-Apple that had real designer or cr uh, credentials, and they built a really cool looking thing and they had all the sort of uh, goodwill behind that. And then Google comes along and says, we're going to buy them. And then suddenly people started saying, well, hang on a minute, we're not necessarily sure that we would have invited you into the, uh, our home if we'd known at the outset that it was going to be this company, not that company. So there's a real interesting... Um, uh, kind of balance of power thing here and, and I guess that's what's going to restrain companies that otherwise might think about doing you know bad things with your data uh, because if it gets out that they have done then the market might collapse so it, it's uh, I think regulation is going to be too difficult um, uh, without re constraining everything but the, the sort of wisdom of the crowd will probably prevail in this sense but we might have to see a few um, you know kind of uh, exposés of companies that are doing the wrong things there was a great example where a journalist wrote a piece about the fact that their smart TV was sending data back to, uh, to its manufacturer whenever they changed channels. And they even went in deep into the menu system, they switched off the, you know, the, the option to send data back, but they put a network sniffer on their home network and they found that it was still doing it. Uh, not only was it sending the fact that they changed channels, but what program they were watching and what program they changed to. Uh, and as an experiment, the same guy put a, a USB stick in the, uh, in the side of the TV and it sent back all of the file names on that stick to, to base. So he complained to the company and said, what about this? And they said, you know, this is part of the terms and conditions. You accepted that when you started using the TV. His argument was no one made this clear. You know, it wasn't explicitly stated. And, and the company initially said that the person that sold you the television should have made you aware of the fact that you were agreeing to this. And of course, you know, a sales guy in Dixon's on a Saturday afternoon isn't going to know these kinds of things. So um, that, that created a backlash and again that changed the behaviour of the, of the company concern.